think we're going to start. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Marco Antonio Gutierrez, and uh, I'm, in, uh, I'm part of Upcode Academy. I'm in charge of the robotics and hardware technology uh, area of the, of the company. And um, I'm going to present you uh, uh, an overview of uh, how to learn, uh, learn uh, how to build uh, self-driving cars. With the, with the strong, uh, we will uh, mainly focus on the computer vision part, which is mainly like the 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 first uh, first step into into this world. Um, first, I, I want I want to ask uh, people here: how many how many of you know how to code? Hands up, hands up. Who knows how to code? Uh, who knows Python? Who knows Python here? Okay, okay. That's fine. Um, for, for our courses, we, we have an introductory Python course, which is actually very good if you don't know how to, how to code Python. Uh, we do a lot of Python uh, on the self-driving car, especially for prototyping and uh, fast learning. It's, it's very good. Uh, in the end, uh, C++ will be needed as a language. So we're also working on a, on a, on a C++ course uh, that will give you advanced, uh, advanced knowledge on, on that field. Because it's actually very uh, skilled that is that is actually required in the self-driving car industry. So uh, I'm going to start uh, a bit of an introduction of uh, why why self-driving cars. Uh, first, uh, we all agree that cars are are a good thing, right? Cars uh, cars are very good. Uh, they they get us places. Uh, they help us move. There's, there's a lot of cars worldwide. They, they help us with transportation, bring stuff from one, one place to another. Uh, they, they shape cities, like cities are, 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 are built around, around cars, uh, roads and everything, right? But uh, has anyone been to Manila? Like, have, have you guys been to Manila? It's, it's, it's pretty awful there, right? The traffic is awful. Filipinos spend 16 days a year, full days, on traffic, which, which makes them lose each of them uh, more than 2,500 uh, SGD in income. But it's not, it's not even better in, in Singapore either. So we, we, we hear we spend like 30 minutes in traffic when we commute, but the ones that have to park, they spend 19 minutes looking for a parking spot, which is not good at all. But it even comes worse. Like, if you've been to, to Bangkok, right? Like me, pretty much, probably a lot of people have been to Bangkok. Then Thailand is the second worldwide uh, uh, country in deaths on traffic. 24,000 people die uh, annually in Thailand just because of traffic. And because of this, Thailand loses 3 to 5% of its GDP. In Singapore, it's better because we don't have that many cars, but it's not good either. Singapore has 10,000 injuries each year, which, if I'm not wrong, it's like 600,000 cars, which makes it like around 6% of those gets involved in an injury, which is not actually very good. And 160 people die, which is not good either, right? Um, this is really bad. This is like a really uh, bad technology. Cars are the technology that is causing more deaths in the world, a technology that is not meant to, to, to kill people. It's cars. So we should do something about it. It's the top, one of the top 10 fatalities in the world. So. How, how can we help this, right? Self-driving cars. We can help decrease these numbers and we can increase safety. We can uh, save time for commuting people through self-driving cars. This is a, a, a picture of, of a self-driving car and these are mostly roughly the, the skills that are involved in a self-driving car. So the basic skill and the one that we're gonna focus today is the computer vision part. Uh, the, 
The, the other skill that I, that I already talked about is uh, C++. This is, is very demanded, uh, pretty much because all the, the, the modules that go into a car have to be very efficient. And using this language, it's, it's actually a way to make them very efficient. Then we also use a lot of convolutional networks to help with the, with the computer vision part. Uh, we need to do vehicular tracking. We need to do deep neural network uh, behavioral trainings, uh, semantic segmentation of the environment of the car. Uh, we need to do assistant integration. We need to take care of the functional safety. We need to do path planning so the car knows how to go from one place to another. We need to do self-navigation for the car. We need to have control modules. Uh, we have to do the localization of the car in the environment. And we have to do sensor fusion because the cars have a lot of sensors. And this information has to be put together to make uh, and take decisions autonomy, autonomously for the car. So today, we're going to focus on computer vision, as I said, because it's, I think it's a very important field. A uh, very interesting skill, not only for self-driving cars, uh, but also for other purposes. Uh, and it's a good entry point to the self-driving car uh, industry. But why computer vision? Computer vision, uh, it's growing a lot. There's, there's the number of, of sensors that are out there, it's growing exponentially. There's this cameras, like even like Probably our cell phones have two to three cameras right now. Uh, computers have cameras. We have cameras on the streets. Everywhere is cameras, right? So there's a lot of information being captured there. And this information has to be retrieved. It is, it is an unsolved problem currently, how to retrieve information from these images. There's so much information that, that we want to take that we're not able yet to, to obtain all of it. For some statistic, this, this, this uh, Cisco Visual Networking Index, you can, you can check it out on the internet. And it says that by 2021, the, the amount of videos that you upload in one month, you, you, it will take you five, five million years to watch it. So the, the amount of video that is going to be on the internet is, is huge. So we need ways to automate this information. 82% of global traffic is already video. So there's, there's a lot of video out there. Video surveillance traffic increase. And then uh, there's, uh, there's, there's, it's a, it is expected to, to have 20 times more of virtual augmented reality information going on on the internet. Uh, if we look at the growth of YouTube, there's, uh, a, this is a bit uh, old, but already by 2016, you can see there's like a 800, 800 hours of videos are uploaded every, every minute into YouTube. This is uh, roughly above 13 hours, 13 hours per second. So I know Google has a lot of people, but there's no way they can manually tag all this video information. So it's, 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 it's very essential to have the, the tools to actually be able to annotate this, this information. Another uh, interesting thing uh, that you can have a look at is that um, according to, to this research, the, uh, the computer vision engineer job will be the most IT job in demand by 2020. Because there's going to be so much information that is captured in images and that is going to be out there on the internet that needs to be retrieved. Like Google right now, it's storing pretty much everyone's uh, pictures on Google photo, right? But they need the means to retrieve information for those photos so they can later use it, right? Another, another important is that uh, that, is, that is actually currently, uh, you can get up to 200K SGD uh, salary in the US with uh, with these uh, skills. So it makes it pretty interesting, right? So I'm going to start this, this workshop by, by breaking one of the first rules of the presentation. And the, one of the first rules is that you shouldn't demo. But we like to break rules here at Upcode Academy. So we're going to go ahead and 
have some fun. This is, this is a video that I took. It's not, it's not the ideal video. It's not a video of a sensor. It's just a video that I took from YouTube. Uh, from, uh, it's, uh, it's coming from, uh, from Singapore, Changi Airport. Uh, I, I don't know the road. I don't know the name of the roads uh, in Singapore, but it's just like basic, basically, if you look at it, it's just a car driving down the road. The, cam the, the camera quality is not very good. Uh, we can try to manage to, to make some, some work with it. So what I went ahead and built is uh, this algorithm that is written in Python. For those of you who don't know Python, this is just loading some libraries. Um, uh, I forgot to say, the, those of you that have the presentation, uh, you, can, you can execute the code by uh, pressing Shift Enter. Uh, you can, you can uh, go forward and backwards with the spacebar, Shift spacebar. And then you can actually switch between presentation mode and the notebook mode with Control R. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and execute this, Shift Enter. And then, as you can see, the, the little number up there changed. So the, 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 the libraries are loaded. These are the main libraries that we're going to use. These are the, the set of functions that I actually prepared for this demo. Uh, I execute them. And then this is the actual algorithm that is doing some lanes detection on the, on the video. This is actually taking the, the video that is called Singapore Drive or MP3, MP4, and then it's, it's, it's uh, detecting the lane lines of the road, and it's outputting that into detect lanes. For those of you using the, the server, the, I'm, I'm doing this locally, so it's faster. It will take a bit more time, but you can, you can probably see the results uh, yourself. Um, yeah, it'll take a bit, uh, bit of time. Um, If you, you can, uh, as I said, you can switch from the presentation mode to the, to the notebook mode if you want to see it in another way with the control R. So it will, be, it will be easier for you, maybe, to check the code and everything. And this, is, this has got, I got uh, another tool for code folding. So if you press on the side of the functions, you can see the code uh, folding and unfolding. So it's easier to see. So this is the, the, the result that we got. And you can see in blue that we're detecting the, the lines. So this is a first step. So the car knows where, where he, sh he should be, right? This is a first step into the self-driving car. Uh, um, the work, right? So how, how do we do this? Let's, let's learn a bit of computer vision for this, this task. I'm going to explain, uh, if we have time, I'm going to explain pretty much everything that, I, that I've done to do this lane detection. Uh, later on, if you want, you can go through the code. It's available on GitHub, or you, it's also on the, on the notebook. So you can, you can have a closer look if, if anything uh, doesn't make sense now. If, if, you don't, if you have any questions, just, just stop me at any time. Uh, I'm more than happy to, to help you out. So the tool that we're using here, there's, there's different tools in computer vision, but one of the main ones, it's OpenCV. It, it started at Intel, and it's a really good library that it's written in C++, but it has Python uh, bi uh, bindings that we can use. So we, we actually make use of the Python part, and it's mainly targeting image processing. So this is what we are basically doing here. We're going to use this library just to do the, the image processing. So as I, as I said before, this is the set of libraries that we're loading. Uh, the most important ones are the import CV2. This is we're, we're loading OpenCV. It's, it's called CV2 in Python because it's the second version of the API. Uh, we're using uh, matplotlib is basically just to show the images in the notebook because you can show images with uh, 
OpenCV, but it's not supported on the notebook. So we're using this, this library. The NumPy is also another important library. It's NumPy, it's used, uh, it's a scientific library for Python. It's the main scientific library. If you know Python, you probably know about it. If you don't, you will see it's everywhere. And because images in, in OpenCV are actually by, uh, NumPy arrays. So it helps us to, to work with the arrays. Uh, the rest is just like, this is basically a list for storing. Uh, this is for the processing, processing of the video. And an OS is for using paths in the, in the code. So that's, that's basically basic, uh, the basic stuff. But let's, let's start from the beginning. What, what's an image, right? This is an image. So this is an image of a letter A. And you can see on the right, there's a bunch of numbers. So each one of the pixels has a number. It's a grayscale image. So it's only, we only have like values from white to black. So it's every, like a white will be a one in this, in this example and then it will go down. It will go down uh, to zero, right? So depending on the intensity of the pixel, you have a different value. That's basically it. When we have, when we have, uh, I'm gonna unfold this. This is, this is the way I'm loading an image and I'm showing it. The, when we have uh, color images, we will have three values per pixel. It will be uh, red, green, and blue. Uh, this, is, this is the way that, I, that we load a picture on OpenCV. Just CV2 in red, and then the path to the picture. And the function that I'm using to show a picture is basically just to show the picture using map.lib in the, in the notebook. So you can probably ignore that part. So basically, we're gonna fold this. I read the picture here, and I saw the image. So if we execute this, shift enter, you should get the image. This is one of the images that I took from the video. So we can see the process of how we detect the, the lane lines here. So we have an image. If we go back, let me go back. If we go back here, wait, I'm clicking here. If we go back here, image, was loaded and saved into the variable image. So that's where we have our image, right? So if we check this image, and then we, take, we, we check the shape, we execute again with shift enter, and then this is the shape of the image. We have an image of 720 per uh, 1,280 pixels, and then we have three values per pixel, which is the red, blue, and green. Um, then if we want to access the first pixel, then we execute this code, and then we can see the three values of the first pixel. It's a 64, 70, 79. You can, you can do it yourself. You can see the different, you can change. If you come here, it's not actually very amazing this, but sometimes it works and then you can get like a different value of a different pixel. You can, you can move around uh, in the matrix, right? The, once we know that uh, an image is a matrix, I'm gonna introduce the, the concept of masks. So masks are used, are basically images or matrix that, that have this shape. So we, we are having some pixels on black and some pixels on, on white. And it, it's good to use as an output of algorithms so we can actually select parts of the image. So if I have an algorithm that is giving me some output, selecting some part, I can create a mask and then select the part on the image. So we're gonna use this to select the white because lanes on the, car, on the, on the road are white. Right? So this, if we use, if we set up some, some numbers, uh, this is the, the values of the red, uh, uh, green, and blue. So they, in, 
in OpenCV, they go to, from 0 to 255, 255. So we basically set up a lower threshold and an upper threshold. And then with this function called in range, you can actually tell uh, OpenCV just to filter the image and just get the, the pixels that are into these two values, the lower and the upper value, right? So with that, we create a white mask that will have only the white part of the image. And then we select that uh, and return it. So if we execute this code, we should get the white on the image. But this white actually is not very good. It's not, it's actually the sky. Of colors, we think the lines are, are white, but if we look at the numbers, they're not, they might not be actually white because of light or because of the camera position, different, uh, different external factors, a lot of noise. So the values are not uh, exactly, the white is not always white. So we have to find another way to do this. So for this, we're using the different, uh, we're taking advantage of the different ways of representing an image. We talked that this, uh, the RGB way of representing an image, which we have like the red color, green color, blue color, and then we, we have all the colors with that information. But we can do it with the hue, light, and saturation, and we can do it with the hue, saturation, and the, and the value. For that, for that, we have the, to change the representation. It's basically just changing the values. And uh, for this, actually, OpenCV give us, I think it's more than 150 functions to change between these representations. So I'm going to try uh, to convert this, this, this uh, image into HAC, HACV and then see how it looks. So if we convert it, this is what we get. And it's still not, it, it, it looks a bit better, but it's still not very good to detect the lanes. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and try with it. Uh, Wait, let me go back. With HALC, if I execute this code, I get this information, right? This is the image. And it seems that I can probably detect the lines, the lanes using the, the, the green lines here, which will be, if we look, if we go back and look at the, um, at the HLS, HLS uh, representation, if I probably use the upper part of this representation, which is the one with more light, so the higher values of the light, I will probably get whatever it's close to white, right? So if I go back to this image, this is what we got. And what I'm doing here is the same thing that I did before with the RGB image, but I'm selecting only the uh, light light value, which is in the middle. I'm taking a value that is not very, very light, like the sky, but it's kind of in the middle. I did a bit of trial and error with this, with this code until I got the actual output that I, that I was uh, looking for. So it's basically the same. We're making a white mask. It's just that we're first, uh, if you look at the first um, line, I'm converting the whole thing into HLS, right? I'm going to fold this, I'm going to execute, shift, enter, and this is what I get. So we have a lot of noise up in the sky, but still we were able to get the lanes. That's the first step. We're going to move forward and try to select the edge of these lanes, right? For, to select the edge of these lanes, we're going to use this, this function that is called canny edge. I, I put uh, usually in the slides a link to the documentation, so you can actually click there and go into OpenCV. It, it will get you to the OpenCV documentation, and you can read like the parameters about the functions, and you can actually have a look at the uh, tutorials that they have. They're very amazing. They have really good Python tutorials on pretty much everything. So for the canny edge, it is a multi-stage algorithm. Basically, use the uses a Gaussian filter, which is basically use, making the image blurry, will we'll 
go into details uh, in a bit, but it, for now you just have to think that it's making the image blurry. Then what, it, what this does is use, it finds the, the gradient direction of each pixel. A gradient, it's, the, it's a vector that points in the direction of the, 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 the magnitude that changes. So basically, this is an example of a gradient, right? So the magnitude of the pixel is changing this way, so we will get a gradient this way. So that, that seems like a good way to find, to find uh, edges, right? Because we just have to look uh, for pixels that uh, are a local maxima in their neighborhood. So the ones that are very black, and then suddenly there's, there's, a, there's a white, the white ones are around, that's probably an edge, right? And then it uses what it's called acidosis thresholding, which is basically using mean, mean values and max values to, the, to determine if, if the pixel is, belongs to an edge or not. So we, we will explain this in a bit more into detail later. So canny edges, basically what you have to get home is they're good for edge detection, they're good for uh, pre-processing images, prior uh, to lanes or shape detection. And then uh, the major drought, drought, drawbacks that you can get is that uh, is they're very sensitive to noise. That's why we use the blurring before. And uh, there's the, you need to use thresholds. So that's the usual problems with thresholds are also applied to this. Like you, your threshold is very high, you have to try different thresholds, stuff like that. Some important tips is that the smoothing, the blurring, it really helps. So it's very important to do that with a, with a correct number of the, the kernel that you, you'll see now that how we do that. So it's very, it's very important that you use, uh, if you use lar uh, larger kernels, it will work better. But if you use a uh, smaller kernel, it will be faster. So we're going to see how to use kernels later. First, we're going to convert to grayscale the image because uh, can, the canny algorithm uh, measures the gradient. So if we convert to, to grayscale, we can get these vectors uh, of gradient uh, properly. So we're going to go ahead and execute this code. This is basically just doing the CVT color functions from OpenCV, and it's converting the RGB image into gray. So if we execute this code, we get the same image, but in grayscale. It's just one value per pixel, as we said before, right? So now we get to the Gaussian blur stage. So we can do the canny edge, right? So Gaussian blur is the function that will blur, they make our image blurry. And this way, we can remove noise from the images. So to see how this is done, the, I'm going to give you a rough idea. This is not, I'm not going to explain the whole maths behind it, because actually you don't, you don't really need to know all the maths. Even I don't know them. I, forget, I forgot them. I studied at some point, but then I just know how to use this stuff. And then if, if I really need to know them at some point, I go and look it up on, on the tutorials or Wikipedia or something like that, right? So the most important part is to know like, the, a rough idea of the function and what you can do, what you cannot do. This is, this is the, the, the way a Gaussian blurring uh, works. And it's basically, this is what it's called a convolution. It's very important in computer vision. You will see like convolutional networks all around the convolution, convolution is very uh, well known now. And basically it, it gets a kernel and it uh, operates the kernel with an input image and it gets another, another image. Through the kernel you get like an average of the of these these pixels, uh, this the matrix of these pixels multiplied for the other one, and then you get a value that you put on the on the resulting. So it so to get a rough idea, basically it combines all these pictures into one, and then it blurs the image. And then the kernel is a Gaussian function. So for those of you that don't know what a function, what a Gaussian function, this is a two D Gaussian function, which is uh, the shape of a Gaussian. So the values in the kernel will have the, the biggest values in the middle. 
the lowest values are around, right? Um, because the intensity changed rapidly in the edges, uh, we, we, we want to make them smooth to reduce the noise. This is the whole idea of the Gaussian blur. And the kernel size can be selected, right? This is the, what, we, what we showed here. The kernel is the thing in the middle that we use to make the, the image blurry. The bigger the kernel, the bigger the, the, the blurrier the, the, the image, and the more noise we can remove. But at the same time, the computation will increase. So if we are processing videos as we do now, our video is very short, but if we're processing like a big video, then this, this uh, can take a lot of time. So if we use OpenCV, it's very easy. We just uh, use the Gaussian blur function and just pass them the image and you can select the kernel size, which we selected at 15 here. It has to be a positive integ integer and it has to be um, even. And then uh, it has to be the, uh, we selected 15 and yeah, basically we get the gray image and then we blur it. And if we, oh, wait, let me go back. If we execute this code, we get, we get the output, right? So it's a bit bloodier. And it has removed some, some noise. You can go back and forth in the, in the, um, with the images so you can actually see the difference from the other ones. This is the one that is not blurry and then we have the one that is blurry here, right? So now we have a blurry image and now we want to do the actual canny edge detection. So OpenCV has its own implementation of this function and what is that is basically uh, the, the gradient value of a picture, of, of every pixel if it's above a tech, uh, uh, the lower threshold, it is accepted. If it's below the higher threshold, if it's, if it's higher the upper threshold, it is accepted. If it's below the lower threshold, it is rejected. But then if it's between the two thresholds, then it's only accepted if the pixel is connected to one that is above the upper threshold. Some important tips to use this, this function is that uh, there's a recommended upper, upper lower ratio between these two thresholds that we have to set up and it's either between 2, two, two 1 and 3, 1. And there's, there's a lot of uh, trial and error on this. So what I did is set up the higher threshold first on the image and then I was seeing what it was going in and what going out and then I set up the lower threshold just to get uh, the information that I want on the picture, right? So here's the code that I wrote, and it's basically calling the canny function from OpenCV, very simple, using the low threshold and the high threshold that we set up, right? You can play around with the thresholds if you want, and you can see the different outputs that you get. We execute this, and this is what we get. Um, this is the edge of the of our blurry image that we had before. Next step. Because we have a lot of noise and because we know that this camera is fixed in the car and the road is always in the, in the same position in the image, we can actually select the part that belongs to the road. So this is called regions of interest and it's basically uh, just we, we include the, uh, only the part that we know that it's important to us, right? So what we're gonna do here is that we select a part, we make a mask as we did before, and then we exclude the, the rest of the image from the, from, the, from the processing, right? So we get all the noise out of it. So you can see we make a polygon, this is you can, you can further look into the code, but basically we have some vertices of the image. As you saw before in blue, we have a few vertices, uh, bottom left, top, top left, bottom right, uh, top right. And once we select that, we, we make a mask again, 
and then we tell we tell the OpenCV just to to cut it, and we we have uh, only this this part. So if we execute this code, let me close this. This doesn't want to close. Wait. Mm hmm. Want to close? Sometimes the code doesn't want to close. This is mask. We got the canny edge, Gaussian blur, and this is the region of interest, and it's not closed. Well, you can probably see it on your, but my my code folding is not working now on this function, so I can't show you the, you can probably view the image like this. So you can see we cut it there, right? So I'm just gonna go back. And I'm gonna go back to the, uh, the cutting. Here we cut the image. And now, once we have the image cut it, we're gonna go through the hue transform, right? If this works, wait. No, I don't want it. Hmm. We're gonna go to the hue transform. There you go. Yeah. So we have the edges and now we want to detect lines, right? So we're gonna use the huge transform, which is a basic function that will detect any shape that can be given in a mathematical form. We can have, um, Line, line, uh, lines in a mathematical form, so we can detect lines. Uh, it uses a voting procedure. It's a bit complicated to explain it here. You can uh, have a look on the tutorial the, that is uh, linked here by OpenCV. It's actually very good, and it will, it will teach you uh, all you need to know about like, the algorithm, how, how the whole thing works, and um, you can get more information about it. But up to now, we know that we can detect lines using this, this function that OpenCV has, right? We are gonna use the line version of it, and uh, specifically we're gonna use the probabilistic one, which doesn't use all the points in the image, it just uses uh, a, a set, a subset of the points in the image. Because this function works pretty much as well as the regular one, and it will make it faster because we're processing video, it will take a lot of time if we use all the points, right? So there's a few um, variables that we have to set uh, for this hue transform. And we have to set raw, which is the distance uh, resolution of, the, of this accumulator uh, for the voting in pixels. And then theta, which is the angle uh, of the resolution of the accumulator in radians. And there's a threshold on how, how many votes the accumulator needs to consider a point, uh, that a point belongs to, to a line or not. There's a minimum length uh, of, for a line, a, a line to be considered a line. And there's a max gap between points to be considered in the same lane. 
these are the, the values that we have to set up. So if we, log, if we check here, we, I, I, I have a function that basically draws the lines, but this is not very important. It's just to show the results. And then I have the, the, the call to the hue, the, the hue transform for the lines detection of OpenCV with the actual values of rho, theta, the threshold, and the minimum values for the length and the gap between points, right? So what I'm, doing, what I'm gonna do here is that I'm gonna pass the image that has the region of interest already cut, and I will get a few lines. And then I'm gonna draw these lines into the image so we can actually uh, see the result. If I execute this, we'll see a bunch of lines going on uh, where we had uh, regions before, right? This is a bit of noise, but we'll take care of that later. Um, what happens here is that we have multiple lines detected for each, each of the lanes in, in, the, in the road, and then some of them are only partially recognized. So we have to extrapolate these, lane, these, these lines to cover the, the full lane that we want to use, right? So there's a trick here. If we look at the, the, the lanes of the, of the road, right? There's this one that, ha that has an inclination one way and the other one has a different inclination, right? So for that, we can actually use the trick that the left the left lane will have a positive slope and the right lane will have a negative slope. So when you have like a lane, a function lane, the lanes with a positive slope are this way and the other ones are the other way, right? Um, in, this, in the images in OpenCV, the Y is reversed. So these, these values actually are, are the other way. But uh, the basic idea is that they, they have opposite, opposite slopes. So we can actually group the, we can actually group the, um, the lines that we have detected here into left lane lines and right lane lines using the slope. So this is what we do here. This is a bit long, but basically you have to get the idea that what we're doing is that we're grouping left lines and right lines using the slope as a discriminator and we are making an average of those, of those lines. And we give uh, the, longer, the longer lines, we give them a bit of more weight because they're supposed to be a uh, better reconstruction of the lane on the road. So this is what this uh, function is doing. Uh, I execute the, the function. So we have it in the Python and now we can actually start um, drawing the lanes. To draw the lanes, we, we need to convert this, uh, these pixels that we already have. We, we need to convert the, the slope and intercept that we calculated in the previous. So the slope and intercept that we calculated, it's actually here, let me go back. So the the slope and intercept that we calculated here, we have a slope and we have an intercept. That's the function of a lane. So for those of you, I don't, I don't have a white, but I can white here. Like for those of you that don't know, this is the function of a, of a line, right? This is the slope, this is the intercept. When we have a, a, a line here, the slope will determine, like, uh, this is the, the different, uh, and then the cut here, it is determined by the intercept, right? And because uh, the Y was uh, negative on the image, that's why we, we have to uh, do it uh, otherwise. That's why we change the, the discrimination on the, on the slope. Um, so now that we have these these two values, what we do is that we have to give basically to OpenCV we have to give them the the 
first and last point of the of the the first and last pixel of the image where we have to where we want the the, the line to be drawn right so we have to calculate these these two points using that that formula over there so this is uh, basically how to calculate this is the just the basic maths over that formula, so we can actually detect the x, x, x1, x2, y1, y2, which are the start and ending pixel of, of our length. And we just basically get out of this is a list of these points, and we use the function CV line to draw the lines, and then we use the add weighted to to mix the images all together. You can see you can see the documentation of these functions clicking in the in the function down there. This is the the functions. This is the one that uh, we'll calculate. So what we uh, what we're doing is that we're telling uh, to calculate on on y one is, is equal to the, to the bottom of the image because we know that the, it will start on the bottom of the image on Y and then we, we want to draw it up to a certain point which is 0 0.7 uh, of the image so it will be like around, roughly around here and then using the, the formula over there we just calculate the actual line like the, the, the X points right so the X will go here and the other one will go somewhere here and then we just draw the lines. For this, if you, if, you, if you check the color that I'm using here, it's actually a different one. So we can differentiate the video from the previous one. I think the previous was blue and this one is, I'm using the, the green uh, part, right? So we execute this and we get the green lines uh, detected and drawn there, right? So we, what we do is that we actually use the add weighted function, which basically gets two images and you can merge them together. So because we build an image with the, with the zeros, we build an image with zeros and we put the lines in the, in the image and then we merge them together. So you can see the image is here and we want like 100% of the image to be there. And then we have the lane image and we just add like 90% of that image to the other one. So you can see there's a bit of transparency on the lines here. You can, you can check the, also the documentation on this through the link that I, that I showed before. And now what we do is that this is, this is called a pipeline, a computer vision pipeline. We use these pipelines a lot in computer vision with, for different purposes for processing images. Uh, so it's a, basically a set of steps that we execute. Uh, to process, to have a, a final outcome. And here's the, I created a class that is, that is taking like, uh, takes images and then it processes these images. And you can see the actual pipeline here and the process, right? You can see that we do, uh, we select the white, we convert the, uh, the, the gray, the, the white to grayscale. Uh, we do some smoothing. We detect the edges using the canny, then we, we select the region using the, the ROI cutting that we, that we saw before, and then we, we select the lines, the line, the lines using the, the hue transform, and using these lines, we average them, and then we, we actually get the, the real lane lines out of it. So, we execute this code so we can have it and we're ready to process the video. We're now able to process an image. Now we can process a video. For this, we basically use the, this library that we load before that basically takes a video input and we can actually process each of the images one by one and using, using our, our function before, right? So we execute this and, and you can see that it's doing the same kind of processing that we saw before. Uh, for those of you that executed this for the first time on the, 
I forgot to mention that for those of you that executed this on the, for the first time on the server, it might start uh, downloading some FF, FF um, MPEG uh, library because it, the first time that if you don't have it, the, the, the library will download the tool because it's needed for the processing of the video. So it will take a bit more time. But it, uh, it, should, it should be quite fast, actually, compared to the time that the whole, the whole server tries to, uh, takes to, to set up, right? So we're almost there. And we finally can see the output. We're done here. So we can now check the video using the functions that we defined. Uh, this with the lines in green. So it's, uh, it's the, the new algorithms that we actually wrote now, right? So going back to numbers, uh, in, the, in the roads, there's, there's actually 92% of the space is not used. And this, this actually can be, uh, can be actually solved. It's a, it's a problem uh, that can be solved doing automation of cars. They can, they can uh, actually upgrade up to 90% usage of the space. And we can, we can probably reduce the amount of traffic jams in, in cities, right? And going back to numbers, 1.3 million people die in road crashes each year, an average of more than 3,000 deaths per day, and is the leading cause of death among young people. And as I said, this is like a big, very big failure of technology that we have to solve. It is a must for everyone uh, in this field to help solve this problem, right? So because of this, we're coming up with a self-driving car degree at Upcode Academy. Um, we're working on this degree that will actually cover all the areas needed for the, for the self-driving uh, car industry. We're talking to the experts that actually work now in self-driving cars. We're get, getting feedback from them. We're, partner, we're getting partnership with them. Uh, so this is actually a really practical course. We're gonna try to reduce the maths involved as much as we can. It's not, it is impossible to, re to remove all the maths, but I think, like as I said before, you don't actually need to know how the heat transform is done. You just need to know that the function is there and what is good, what is bad on these functions. So you can actually use them in, in the real world. For, uh, we're, we're trying to partner with this company so we can actually have like real practice on field and you can actually get real experience out of it. For now, we have a computer vision course going on that uh, you can actually check this website. It's the, the information of the syllabus is there. You can see what we're gonna teach and what information will be involved in the course. It will be a basic introduction into computer vision for pre-processing, something similar uh, uh, so to what we're doing, here, what we saw here. Basically, pre-processing pre -processing of images, very basic for Python. For those of you that don't know Python, you can take the Python course, which is actually a good uh, way to get into the programming uh, world. And it's an easy language to learn. So it's a, as a first step, you can take Python course and then you can move into this one, uh, which is the, the first step into the self-driving car industry. So that's pretty much it from my side. Thank you very much. Uh, if everyone has uh, any question, I'm open to it. Uh, you can drop me an email. You can check the course over there, uh, check the GitHub, check the, the it will be up uh, for a long time so you can no worries for that, and thank you very much. Any questions?
I'm okay. I think we're done for today. Uh, yeah. Uh, can you go back to the picture that the car in the middle and the skill set that you did? Mm-hmm. So out of all the skill set, what are the ones that is most difficult to master? That's a tricky question. I guess once you go into higher levels, uh, you you have to build everything from the ground, right? So computer vision, C++, those are the first steps, right, into the into the field. Uh, I would say that when if you have to do systems, the system integration, for example, you need to understand the whole the whole the whole thing, right? Or the control part. Those are usually the 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 higher level and so you have to understand what it's underneath so i would say those those are actually the the most difficult parts but um yeah basically what what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the first courses out as soon as we can so we can build from the ground up all the knowledge that is needed to to get uh, self-driving cars developers out there Yeah, there's one session per week, two, I think it's 2.5 hours, two and a half hours, yeah. So in a course, it's basically, we're teaching a lot of OpenCV, which is very nearly focused on, on image processing. We're teaching a lot of uh, point cloud library, which is a library that uh, it's focused on point clouds, which is the, basically the information that you can get with the lasers that the, the cars have. I don't know if you've seen the, the Newtonomy cars around here. These guys, they have like a, like a laser on top that goes around. So that's, that's taking like the, the point cloud of the environment. So how to deal with that information, how you can process that. And then we have the last session is on machine learning. So you can get a bit into the machine learning because OpenCV has a module on machine learning. So we're gonna try to give you a basic information uh, about machine learning. Although we're also working on a convolutional network, network uh, course that takes uh, more uh, computer vision and machine learning all together for a whole course. But this one is the, like the first step for pre-processing images that you need to know. Because actually for sometimes when you get a, a data that you have to feed into a convolutional network, you have to do some pre-processing. So actually the, having this knowledge is actually good. How do, you, how do you go? From detection well, you, you, have, you actually have to go to, it's, 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 so this is a very easy example, right? So we ha only have like one hour here. Uh, there's not much time to, to do the whole thing, right? So when we have the, this, this lane detection is actually probably not good enough for, for a car, right? If, if there's, a, there's a turn, it probably won't work properly. If there's, a, if there's lights changes, it won't work properly, right? So that's where you have to get like some uh, neural networks into it, and it's everything. It's very, it's it's much more complicated. So if you look at the picture, um, let me go back. If you look at the picture of the car, right? There's there's this sensor fusion thing that is actually very important because you you're not gonna use only the information from the camera. You're gonna use information from from other sensors, right? So. You can, you can have like a light sensor, and if the light sensor is, this is different, then you, you're gonna have like different values on your thresholds, right? Let's say the, these thresholds that we have set up manually, they won't work in every setup, right? So you have to do a lot of tuning for these thresholds, or you, you actually have like neural networks learning the good values depending on the different uh, data that you get from the different sensors. So it, there's actually a lot of work involved, and more than even a lot of work, there's a lot of testing involved. That's why you see these guys going around with a car all the time. Because everything that you do, you have to test it. And then you need a lot of data, so you can actually train your networks, and you can use that information to, to actually steer your car. So you, you actually, ultimately you will have some control that will get some information and then will steer the car from one way to another. But this is like the, basic first step that you can actually do 
to, to get some information or on where to go or not, right? You can also use the GPS information, right? So if the GPS is telling you, you can have preloaded maps. That's also information that you can use. So this, this all information you have to take it all together. It's not only the camera image, right? Which of the modules here is handling the collision avoidance, like hitting another car, hitting a human? Uh, that's part of the control part. So what, taking the information that we have, the control part will actually, so all the, all the modules will, will come together, give information, and then the control at some point will take a decision on, on where the, the car should go, should stop. That's the, the ultimate decision we'll take there, right? Anything else? Why is it so um, self-driving car focused? And do you think there is like such a huge demand in like uh, self-driving car engineers? We, I don't, I don't know, but the, the I don't know about the self-driving car industry itself. Co computer vision is, is is definitely gonna be a huge thing. So basically. Um, the, the, the vision information is, is huge already out there, and uh, there's no means and to actually retrieve all the information in this in this data. Right? So that that's that's a huge field right now. Uh, for the for the for the self-driving cars, I think it's an industry that it is actually at a point where they're not yet there, and they still like they, they reach like a point where they actually have to put a lot of work to, to come up, out in the industry. But I think it, it, it will grow, it will start growing once it's, it's, it's out there. Here in Singapore, it's actually not bad. There's, there's quite a few groups that are actually doing the, the self-driving car thing. So yeah, we expect that those fields to grow more and more. And so the, the part is dedicated to computer vision and uh, computer the CNN is more than the other class. So the current class that we only that, that we only have right now is the the computer vision part. So that's the first one. They we're working on C plus plus advanced C plus plus and CNN computer uh, convolutional neural networks. We're trying to do these courses independent. So you don't actually have to take the whole degree. You don't. They're, they're independent. So in, in computer vision class, uh, we will teach only computer vision. There's not going to be uh, any, it's not going to be specific for self-driving cars. It's going to be useful, and it's going to be part of this degree, but it's not, you can, you can take it and then work on something else. You can go work on Google and do some image recognition, right? So it's not related 100%. Anyone else? Okay. Any questions, you can reach me on an email. And uh, thank you very much.